Hi, in this lecture, I am going to talk about the organization of module one, the different chapters inside the module and the content of each chapter. I'm also going to touch upon the need for software engineering in today's world of modern software development. We're going to see how software or what role software engineering practices, technologies and processes, how, what role they play in the development of modern software. We're also going to look at a few challenges of software engineering tools, technologies and processes. How software engineering technology or processes have to evolve with changing requirements. We're going to also deal with what are the different re uh, reasons why software engineering practices sometimes become inadequate for modern software development. Without further ado, let's get into the content. This is the organization of the module. The module comprises of three chapters. The first chapter, we look at the need for software engineering and what this crisis software engineers face when they develop modern software. We are also going to see how software is professionally developed and how software development by an amateur or a hobbyist is different from the software developed by a standard organization which has software engineering practices and best practices in place. We're going to talk about different software engineering ethics every engineer will have to follow when developing software. We are also going to look at case studies showing how software engineering, uh, the role software engineering plays in the development of critical software systems. In chapter two, we're going to look at different software processes and the models that can be used for development of software products. Specifically, we're going to talk about the waterfall model, the incremental model, the spiral model, and the different process activities that ultimately lead to the development of quality software products. In chapter three, we're going to learn what are requirements. We're going to learn how do we engineer requirements how do we collect requirements? How do we analyze them? And how do we classify them as functional and non-functional requirements? Not to forget, both of these classification of requirements are equally important to keep a client happy. We're also going to talk about development of a software requirements document. We're going to learn what is software specification, validation, and management. So in today's lecture, in this lecture in particular, we're going to look at what is the need and role of software engineering in modern software development and what do we mean by software crisis. We live in a sophisticated world. We can't run the modern world without software. So first, let's look at what is the relationship between modern world and the technologies we use today and software engineering practices. If you see, national infrastructures, utilities are all controlled by computer-based system, be it electrical products, be it industrial manufacturing, be it distribution, be it a financial system, be it data management system, be it entertainment, infotainment, gaming, everything has software behind it. If we take a look at a few vertical applications where software plays an important role in the development of quality and robust software. Look at the picture at, on this slide. This shows a smart home system or an automated home. In a, a smart home system, you may have facilities like a thermostat, a lighting system, a temperature control system, which can automatically set lighting and temperature and many other facilities customized to the user. Suppose you leave the home in the morning, the smart home system can automatically turn off the lighting system and the heating or the cooling system for you. 
The smart home system can also detect the presence of an intruder and alert you on your mobile phone or using any other alert system. Suppose you take a vacation, the smart home system can facilitate watering of your garden. It can have soil moisture sensors, humidity sensors, temperature sensors implanted in your garden, which can constantly detect measure values from the environment and turn on or off a water sprinkler system. A smart home system can also change the intensity of the lighting within your house based on the time of the day. A smart home system could turn on some nice music for you when you get back home from work. A smart home system can also have remote control of the appliances that are available in your home. A smart home system can also decide when to turn on and turn off certain appliances which are not having critical functionality based on the energy consumption of your home. For example, let's say during the day, especially towards the evening or just before the end of the day, the energy consumption of a house may be really high. This is because you'll have your lighting system on, you'll have your cooling or your heating system on, you may have your gadgets turned on, you may have your entertainment systems on. So you can see there is a lot of energy consumption from the home by, you know, made by your smart home. The smart home system can now detect that there is a heavy load on the grid and then decide to run your washing machine only when you go up to sleep, say post midnight when all your devices, your lighting systems, your entertainment units are turned off. In this way, a smart home system can achieve the needed load balancing for your house. Not just this, a smart home system can connect with other smart homes in your vicinity or in your neighborhood and synchronize your consumption cycles accordingly in order to reduce the load on the total energy grid. For example, if you turn on your air conditioner and observe how it works, you can see that the air conditioning system has on and off cycles. When the temperature falls below a particular threshold temperature, your air conditioner is automatically, automatically turned to off. And when your room temperature goes above the threshold, the air conditioning system is turned on. In this way, your air conditioning system has constant on and off cycles to reserve energy. Now, your smart home system can communicate with your neighbor's smart home and then know when your air conditioner is in the on cycle, your neighbor's air conditioner may be in the off cycle. So in, when you synchronize these on off cycles of say an air conditioning system in the neighborhood, you see how there is a load that is balanced on the grid without causing random spikes and you know any kind of uh, damage to other devices or the grid itself. Your smart home system can also have a smart garbage collection and disposal facility. Your smart home system can automatically charge your electrical vehicle at night at the charging station or in your parking lot. In this way, you see such kind of an application like a smart home system requires robust, dependable, available, reliable software. When you use software engineering tools and techniques to develop software, you are guaranteed to have the desired software for this kind of an application. Let's look at another automated system, which again is controlled by software. Let's talk about connected cars and connected roadways. We already know that our vehicles are having enough sensors to detect air pressure, oil pressure, temperature, and many other entities that are required for us to drive safely. Our cars can communicate now with other cars on the road in their vicinity and get information and display information to the driver, information like if a particular lane or road is congested, inform the driver to take another route, inform the driver if there is an emergency vehicle that needs way, inform the driver that there will be a traffic signal ahead and whether the traffic signal is set to red or green. 
So the car can communicate with other cars in its vicinity, vicinity in an ad hoc fashion. When I say ad hoc fashion, I mean on demand basis because your car is moving along with other cars that are moving. So the network that has been created because your car wants to talk to other cars, right? There's a network created on an ad hoc basis. This is because as your car moves to a different loca uh, locality or a different location, the network is going to change because the same cars are not going to be surrounded by your car right even the infrastructure like a traffic lighting system or a traffic control system is going to change it's not going to be stagnant so as and when your car moves to a different region new networks are made new networks are disconnected and so on your car within itself can have infotainment systems can have entertainment units and so on can provide adequate recommendations to the user based on their browsing history this is another example of a vertical application, an automation application, which demands robust quality software to be in place. Developing such software definitely requires you to apply software engineering tools, techniques, and processes. Let's look at a few gaming applications and entertainment units. So if you look at streaming uh, software modules, if you look at uh, the different gaming uh, systems that are in place, all of them require robust software. They need to co connect to a good quality network. You need to communicate. You need to be able to communicate with other users on the network. The software also needs to provide recommendations. The software also may have to provide facilities from which the user can resume watching a particular program from where he had left. So you can see the interfaces of these entertainment systems will be customized according to a particular user profile. All this requires quality software and quality software can be built only using software engineering tools and techniques.